What's going on? It's your boy Fly Guy J, and I'm back with another video. Now, this week on Wavy Wednesdays, we'll be taking a look at the Waves L2 Ultra Maximizer plugin, and I'll be showing you how to take your mix from this. See my late night flex. See my late night flex. To this. See my late night flex. See my late night flex. As you just heard, by using that Waves L2 Ultra Maximizer plugin as the last plugin in my mastering chain, I'm able to bring the final mix up to a competitive level and get the volume of my final mix to a level that's ready to either print to CD or send to the distributors for uploading to streaming sites or music stores. Now, before I explain what the L2 Ultra Maximizer does and go over the individual controls of the plugin, I want to encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notifications of future videos. If you're interested in learning more mixing and mastering techniques, then you definitely want to follow my channel and drop me a comment. Let me know any specific techniques or plugins that you're interested in learning more about. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So as you can see, this is my mastering chain that I'm using for this particular song. Uh, the Studio Rack plugin shows all the different plugins I'm using. And the last plugin that I'm using in my mastering chain is the L2 Ultra Maximizer. And this is the plugin that is giving the song that final boost in volume in order to get it to a competitive level. Over to the right, you can see the L2 Ultra Maximizer plugin. This plugin is basically an advanced look ahead peak limiter, which uses brick wall limiting to prevent your final output signal from clipping and causing distortions, clicks, and pops when being played back on other monitors or car radios etc it also uses a high quality dithering algorithm there's two different types of dither and there's three noise shaping curves that allows you to get maximum resolution when reaching the maximum final output signal of your song so real quick i'll go over all of the controls of the plugin and then i'll give you guys a quick example of how i would use this plugin in my mastering chain so again, first and foremost, the L2 Ultra Maximizer plugin was designed specifically for mastering, and it was designed to be used as the last plugin in your mastering chain. All right, so the first control we'll talk about is the threshold. The threshold determines when the limiter will start working. As you lower the threshold from zero to a negative number, you'll see the amount of gain reduction or attenuation that you're achieving the amount of limiting that's going on you'll see here. In most cases, when using the L2 limiter, you wanna aim for about negative four to negative six decibels of attenuation. The next control we'll talk about is this out ceiling. This control determines the maximum output level that your final mix will have when it leaves your DAW. It's basically the set point for your brick wall limiter. So for example, if I were to set this to negative one, then the final volume leaving this DAW when I bounce out my song is gonna be low, no louder than negative one. If you're printing your final mix to a CD, then it's safe to use an output ceiling of around negative 0.3. If you are bouncing out your song and you're gonna upload it to digital stores or streaming sites such as Spotify, then the recommendation is to bounce your song out at negative 1.0. By setting the ceiling lower than zero, you're guaranteeing that when your listener plays back the audio, they're not gonna hear any random distortion, random clicks, or random pops that would be created if your signal were to go above zero. The next control we'll talk about is this link button in the middle. If you click and hold this button and then drag down, then as you can see, the threshold and the out ceiling will be linked and you'll be able to reduce both of those values at the same time or increase them at the same time. The reason you would wanna do this is so that as you lower the threshold, your song is going to get louder. So initially, if you don't lower the threshold and the out ceiling at the same time, then you're not gonna hear a true representation of what the limiter is actually doing to your sound. I'll explain this more in detail later through the use of a live example. The next control we'll talk about is the release setting. The release determines how long the limiter will hold on and compress that signal before it lets go. When using this in the mastering process, instead of setting a specific release value, 
I like to use this ARC button or auto release control is what it stands for. And by enabling that button, the auto release control will automatically find the best release values to use throughout the song. So as your song gets louder and quieter, it will adjust the release timing to get the best output signal. So again, the best thing to do is to just enable the ARC, set it and forget it. Next to the release controls, we have the attenuation. This meter will show you the amount of gain reduction or attenuation that's being done by the limiter. You'll also see the value of the maximum amount of attenuation displayed down here. Again, you wanna shoot for anywhere from negative four to negative six dBs. And then the last section we have is the IDR section. IDR stands for Increased Digital Resolution, and these controls determine the resolution of your final output signal. And that consists of the quantize setting. You can choose from either 16 bits, 24 bits, 22 bits, or 20 bits. In most cases, unless there's a specific requirement to print out the audio at a different bit level, 16 bits is gonna be perfect for printing your audio to CD or uploading to streaming sites such as Spotify, iTunes, etc. Next, we have the dither type settings. You can choose between type one, type two, or none. Generally, you're going to either choose type one dither or type two dither. There's really not a good reason for you ever to choose none that I can think of. Um, if you guys have a reason why someone would choose none, please drop a comment and educate me on that. Um, but usually when I use this plugin, I bounce back between type one and type two. I'll take a listen and 90 to 95% of the time I'm settling on type one. The type one dither is the recommended setting. It uses the purest uh, dithering technology and it gives you a high quality output signal with no nonlinear distortion. The type two dither is a lower quality dither that introduces a little bit of distortion. Um, again, what you should do is set your threshold and then bounce back between type one, type two, and see what sounds better to you. Lastly, we have the shaping setting. You have four choices here. You can choose to use no noise shaping. You can use moderate shaping, normal shaping, or ultra noise shaping curve. And without getting into the technical aspect of what the shaping is, all you really need to know when using this plugin is that the ultra setting introduces the least amount of noise. And if you're trying to get the highest quality signal and you know for a fact that nobody else is going to touch this mix once you output it, then I would use the ultra setting. If you want a high quality output, but you're sending this song off to another mixing or mastering engineer, or there's a chance that someone may add another effect or remaster it themselves, then you wanna choose the normal noise shape type. The moderate noise shaping curve is gonna result in a little bit more noise being introduced to the signal, and it's usually recommended that you use either the normal noise shaping or the ultra noise shaping. I wouldn't recommend using the none setting for noise shaping. This could result in more audible distortion or hissing being heard in the final mix that you output. All right, so now that we've gone over all the controls, I'll reset everything and then I'll play back the track and I'll show you how you can use this to reach your final level. So I went ahead and looped the hook section of the song. We'll play it back and I'll start to reduce the threshold and the out ceiling simultaneously by using this link button. And we'll decrease this until we see four to six dBs of attenuation. And while we're lowering the threshold, we'll listen to how that is affecting our output sound. Once we start to hear the signal is being too compressed or you start to hear any, any uh, distortion or maybe the kick or the snare is starting to get squished too much and lose some energy, then we'll back off the threshold and bring it up again. Let's check that out. See my late night flex. See my late night flex. See my late night flex. See my late So you can see we're getting a little bit of attenuation over here. Looks like when the kick drum hits. 
So you can see if I go down too far with the threshold and we start to get heavy attenuation, this is about negative 9.8, the overall sound starts to sound like trash. It's getting distorted. It's losing the energy. So we definitely want to back this back up until we find that sweet spot. See my late night flex. 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 See what's been a bag of some design. So I, as you can see, I was bypassing the L2 on and off to hear the difference in what the final sound would be before and after the plugin. And I'm satisfied with this. So now the next step is we'll go ahead and we'll increase the out ceiling and set our uh, setting for the out ceiling. This song you can find on all the streaming platforms. It's called Designer uh, by Fly Guy J and Flamo. And since we uploaded this to the streaming platforms, I've set the out ceiling to negative one dB. What I'll do is I'll slowly increase this back to negative one so you can hear what this does. So you can hear we've gained a lot of volume using this L2 Ultra Maximizer. The last thing I will do is I will go through and test out the dither and shaping settings and see what I like best. Again, we'll be exporting this at 16 bits. That's perfectly fine for uploading to streaming sites or downloading to CDs. I'll start with a type one dither and then I'll cycle to type two and then I'll go through each of the noise shaping curves. See my late night flex. 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 She gon' spin a bag on some design. She never wanna ask that design. I just dropped a bag on some design. She know my body, that's design. See my late night flex. So it's very subtle differences, but again, if you go by the recommended settings and you understand what each of these control settings are doing, then it's best to choose type one ultra if you want a high quality sound with the least amount of distortion and hissing, and you know that this is not going to be remastered again. If you want a relatively low noise, you can change from type one to type two. And if you're not sure if anyone else is going to do any more mixing or mastering on the song, then instead of choosing the ultra shaping, you should choose the normal shaping. So one last time, I'll bypass the plugin and then I'll engage it so you can see where we started at and where we ended up. So this is with the plugin bypass. See my late night flex. See my late night flex. And now with the plugin engaged. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how to use this L2 Ultra Maximizer plugin in your mastering process. It's definitely a must have plugin for me. I highly recommend it for any of you looking to mix and master your own music. It's a relatively easy plugin to use and it results in a great high quality output signal for your final mix. For those of you who are interested in downloading or purchasing this plugin, I'll leave a link in the description that'll take you to the Wave site. 
Also, if you're interested in streaming or downloading the full version of this song, Designer by Fly Guy J and Flamo, I'll leave a link in the description. And I'll also leave a link to the artist's Instagram account if you want to check out their page or listen to any more of their music. Thanks again for stopping by the channel. Tune in next week for another episode of Wavy Wednesdays. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for future video notifications. If you have a specific plugin you'd like me to cover in future videos, just drop a comment and let me know. Until next time, keep learning, keep creating, and keep grinding. I'm out. She a bad one, she love designers. I'm a real one by her kindness. She want that real love, the internet. She said that new drip keep a wet. She my late night flex. 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 She gon' spin a bag on some design. She never wanna the design. I just dropped a bag on some design. She know my body, that design. Yeah. Smirk, my boy. Young King got it out the dirt, my boy. She show me love.